Thank you. She is an avid runner and hiker and enjoys traveling. She fills her days volunteering with nonprofit organizations. Mary serves on the board of directors for the North County Land Trust, Friends of Cogsall, the Fitchburg Contributor Retirement Board, as well as the chair of the Educators Advisory Group for Project 351, which is a youth-led community service organization. Please welcome Mary Kringen, please. All right, next up is Kathy Cragen. Kathy Cragen is a graduate of St. Bernard's. St. Bernard's, I didn't want to say St. Bernard's. St. Bernard's High School, class of 1966, and Fitchburg State University, class of 1970. She's a retired Lemister Public School art teacher. Kathy lives in Fitchburg with her husband, Jim. Uh, currently, she spends her days helping care for her favorite artist, uh, her granddaughter, Madeline. Uh, let's give a big hand for Kathy Cragen. Last on our uh, last on our celebrity uh, panel here of, of contestants, we have the man, the mouth, the myth, the teen pop sensation. It's Sherman Whitman. Uh, Sherman Sherman is originally from Ann Arbor, Michigan, and uh, he attended Eastern Michigan University. Uh, he worked in New York City. He worked with Howard Stern actually for a couple of years. He came to Boston. Uh, that was after Boston, but he came to Boston in 1984 to work for WBCN, where he was a news anchor and reporter for a decade. He moved on to Worcester's WCRN and has now been a morning drive personality at WPKZ, the K Zone, 105.3 FM and AM 1280 for more than 10 years. Sherman has been living in Fitchburg for many years, so he's now an honorary New Englander. Uh, he's also a proud great grandfather. Give a hand for Sherman Whitman. Sherman, go on up there. Question presenter this evening is Jesse Olson. Jesse Olson is the yes. Give a hand, please. Jesse Olson. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jesse Olson is the executive director of the Fitchburg Cultural Alliance and the member of the board of directors here at the Fitchburg Historical Society. Jesse has a 27-year career in the arts throughout central and eastern Massachusetts. And I believe uh, at this time I'll be handing over the podium to Jesse. Thank you. Great. So first, Cleghorn started to be developed in the middle of the 1880s when two textile factories started next to the river and French Canadian immigrants came to work in the factories and settled nearby. Okay, this is gonna show you how badly I remember my French lessons from high school. According to Le Poirot Saint Joseph Historique, published in 1940, there were 250 of these in 1897 531 in 1898, and 550 in 1899. Mary, what were they? Uh, <laughs> taverns. <laughs> oh, that's, that would be an exciting part of Fishburg if there were 250 of them, but I'll take that. Um, no. <laughs> what might there be 500 of ish in 1898? I feel like Scooby-Doo, I'm ready to go. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> um, so St. Joseph might be a school? Student. Okay. Students. Who, who said students? I did. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> students, all right, then Mary gets a point. Wow. Students. Yeah. Students, students at St. Joseph's yeah. school. Students. There were only eight classrooms. So 110 boys had to go to school in an old wooden school building next to the church. They were taught by the Soir Fidelis Campagna de Jesus. <laughs> um, a girls' school was constructed and ready for the new school year by 1904, and the boys' school was expanded again with a new wing in the mid-20s, and there ended up being more than 1,300 students. Man, those quadrupled fast. <laughs> okay, moving into the next question. In the 60s and 70s, kids at Fitchburg High Schools divided themselves into two different groups. What were they called? The nope. Sharks and the Jets, the Townies and Gownies, the Lunchies and Packies, or the Sashes and the Greasers? C, Lunchies and Packies. <laughs> yes! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And this, the story behind that is just relative to who bought lunch and who the way brought they lunch. dress too. The way they oh, really? Yeah. yeah, Oxfords and chinos or uh, jeans and roll-up shirts that, and hair slicked back it was a whole shtick. Wow. And, and so was there like a Sandy and uh, no, no. no. <laughs> um, Okay, uh, so Mary, according to one of our members, if there was a big battle or offensive coming up during World War II, teachers would march children out of the public schools to go somewhere. Where would they go? Fallout shelter. Mm -hmm. A fallout shelter? That would have been smart. <laughs> um, but no, they were a little oh. more hopeful. A oh, uh, church? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> Moving on to the rock portion of School of Rock, um, we're going to test your knowledge of rocks and quarries. So Rollstone Hill is shorter than it used to be because of all the rock that was quarried from it. Uh, Mary, what yeah. kind of rock was quarried there? Well, the boulder came from there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what type of rock? I'm supposed to know this, right? If you don't, you can pass. I'll pass. Kathy. Granite? Yes. <laughs> wow. It's the only rock I know. <laughs> We're very close to the granite state, so that's yes. Um, in, 18, in 1989, an international conference of geologists visited Volstone Hill and collected some samples. They said that the rock there was about 400 million years old, and Rollstone Hill was actually the site of uh, six different quarries. And there it is. Okay. Wow. Moving on to the next question. Sherman, quarrying rock is hard work, and different immigrant groups that came to Fitchburg dominated the quarrying industry at different times. Which of the following groups did not dominate the industry in Fitchburg during its heyday? The Greeks, the Finnish, the Irish, or the Italians? Oh boy, this is going to be a tough one. Um, I'll say the Greek. Yes. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. They had a nice festival last week. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is a group of Finns working in the quarry. The Finns actually left Finland in the late 1800s, and many came to America in order to avoid the Russian army draft. How funny. Um, not funny, but interesting. Um, in 1901, the first Greek immigrant came to Fitchburg, and the Greeks went to Lowell to work in the textile mills, but many became disenchanted with Lowell and came to Fitchburg. Uh, the last quarrying operation was the Rollstone Granite Company, owned by Richard Shea, which ceased operations in 1941. That had operated for over 100 years, or at least 100 years. Okay, moving on to our next rock question. There is a building on the Upper Common from 1837 that has columns made out of single pieces of granite. Uh, Mary, this is your, for you. Uh, these are known as monolithic columns. What building is at the top of the col uh, common with monolithic columns? It's the church at the top. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where Will Doc Angelo hangs yes. those wonderful yeah. banners. Yes, First Parish Church, First a.k.a. Parish. the Unitarian Universalist yeah. Church. It was established in 1764 <laughs> before the separation of church and state. And originally the taxes you paid were your tax tithe at the, t t at the church. The West Side Highway in New York, uh, Kathy, uh, the West Side Highway in New York City was constructed out of rollstone granite. And so was nearly every stone bridge over the Hudson River. And there was a reason that the New York stone cutters would only, would let in rollstone granite when they kept other stone out. It was because Fitchburg was one of the first in this country. And what was unique about Fitchburg's quarry workers? They unionize? Yes. Oh. Wow. Oh. <laughs> they, um, New York would not allow any non-union stone into New York, and Fitchburg quarries were pioneers nationwide in unionizing. And this may be because of the Finnish quarry workers, because the Finns had a history of forming unions in both Finland and Fitchburg. Now we're going to segue to another type of rock, which is music. So let's talk a little bit about Fitchburg's music history. 
So, all right, so which of these is a piece of music recently published by Young Coffee Music? Oh, what is that? Started I don't know, I can't see. by the two Fitchwork guys and located at that church at the head of the common. And if you were at Main Street Studios today, you might have heard this song. So, is it Rhythm and Rock by the Grizz Gang? Convenience Fee by Yo Daddy Doe? Swing in Massachusetts, Mademoiselles by the Thurston Consort, featuring Monica McNamara, or Endless Love, a duet by Amanda Cody and Zach Frederick. Sherman. I'll try Rhythm and Rock, Grizz Gang. No. No, it's oh, Endless no. Love. I think it's so Endless Love. So we have two, uh, three left, Mary. Uh, endless Love. No. Oh, I mean, I that's, okay. what oh. that's what I was going to say. Um, convenience fee? Yes. So the connection, well, aside from being a, um, they had the Rhythm and Rock Festival at River, uh, Riverfront Park last weekend, but the, the Young Coffee Music Group is working at the First Parish Church, and that was also the seat of an anti-credit card campaign during the Vietnam War. So it's appropriate for them to have a song about bank fees. <laughs> wow. Speaking of banks, which Fishburg bank has the slogan, Sherman, rock solid banking since 1846? <laughs> it's on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. I can't get it. Rollstone? Yes. Thank you. Right. Trust, yeah. Although when it was established Ooh. in 1846, the bank was called the Fitchburg Savings Bank. All right, so we're going to do a toast. We're going to do a toast. And the people, uh, the lovely people of the Fitchburg Historical Society, they really, they encourage you to get excited about the alcohol that they've provided for you this evening. They've actually, they've prepared for it in advance. Everything you see around you, it's, uh, this is all fake antiques. They came in ahead of time. They were... <laughs> No, they replaced, no, they really did. They replaced everything. They replaced all the antiques with fakes. It spent, it spent an extravagant amount of money. It was a huge expenditure to the taxpayer. It was ridiculous. And um, so they encourage you to get, ra get wet, get wild, get rowdy, be ridiculous, start cursing. They can edit it out after. It's fine. It's fine. So uh, in that spirit, we're going to be doing a toast right now. Uh, I'm going to read a poem. I'm not told who this poem is by, but that's okay. It, at the end, it says, okay, all right. Oh, all right, all right. <clears throat> all right, here's the poem. All right, at Lemonster. When BF went to Lemonster, we five went down to Rood. We went down on the trolley car. Bump, bump, ding, ding, toot, toot. The score it was against us when we went in the gym. But we cheered and yelled and hollered with everlasting vim. Then BF took an awful brace and many baskets threw, and Lemonster was on the losing end when the referee's whistle blew. Uh, that was written by, I'm allowed to say who it was written by? That was written by Janet Stewart, uh, Fitchburg High School class of 1925. It's funny, that's just less, that's less than 20 years before the K-Zone was opened in 1941. That's, uh, thank you very much. That's... 105.3 FM and AM 1280 WPKZ, the K-Zone, live and local fun since 1941. Isn't that right, Chairman? Yeah, listen to the K-Zone. Right. The K-Zone morning commute from 942, that's, nine, that's 642 to 9 o'clock in the morning. Okay, that's me and Sherman right there. Um, and our toast this evening, everybody, please raise your glasses, please. Raise your glasses, everybody. I'll wait, I'll wait till everybody, even if it's just a water bottle, we want everybody to get involved. Everybody gets to have fun. It's like a charity event. So, um, our toast is you, and you repeat after me. We're going to have it right here. It's bump, bump, ding, ding, toot, toot. Thank you. Good night. Toot, toot. Toot, toot. Toot, toot. All right, so we're back to Mary. <laughs> okay, so Mary. New car. So, the final verse of this song goes from 1907. New courage will inspire our hearts with brighter fire. We'll conquer then misfortunes one and all, urged on by that persistent call, that voice that long ago we heard, Necide Malis, our watchword. What does Necide Malis mean? I was going to ask you to sing it so I could. <laughs> Um, I have no idea, so I'm going to pass it to Kathy. Okay, Kathy. Any idea what nacide malice means? No harm. No harm. Intended. 
intended? Um, Malice. Well, Sherman, do you want to take a crack at it? Necessity, malice. Malice is bad. Oh. No matter how hard the <laughs> challenge. <laughs> well, Kathy, you were pretty close. It was do not yield to misfortune. So no oh, harm, oh no misfortune. No okay. um, I took Latin for five years, and when I saw that, I was like, <laughs> but that was also 30 years ago. So <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, uh, but it was written by Virgil, and it was a class motto chosen by the students. And one of Carrie Whitney's fellow classmates in the, in the class of 1907 was Bernadine Kilty, who wrote the novel The Girl from Fitchburg. Kelty. Uh, and she wrote about Fitchburg <laughs> that financial shenanigans were rare in Fitchburg as topics of conversation. Affairs of the heart were not. Our own little Peyton place. We're back to rock and roll and the school of rock. Who lived in New York City in 1950, playing the drums and doing stand-up comedy? But in 1955, he bought Fitchburg Music Store on North Street. And one day before it was going up, uh, he bought it in 1950, one day before it was about to declare bankruptcy. Oh. He liked to wear snazzy outfits. Yeah. I'm going to pass. Jerry Martel. Jerry Martel. Yeah. Mm. Jerry, you had a hat. Yeah. Um, no, so, okay. yes. Jerry. And now, actually, North Street is named Jerry Martel Square. Right. Right. Um, so, what group did Jerry credit for his success, saying it helped him to be in the right place at the right time? He got a little help from his friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Beatles. Yes. <laughs> um, born in 1927, uh, Jerry served in the Navy during World War II, and he was a Rotary Club member for over 50 years, and he died in, in 2019. And he was known by many as Mr. Fishburg, and he had some snazzy outfits. Fancy cars, yeah. And fancy cars. Uh, Kathy, what, so now we're back to schools. Uh, what book delivery service lasted as long as its transportation? And this is, um, at school, you do your book report at the library. So this is about libraries. So what book delivery service lasted as long as its transportation? The Fitchburg Bookmobile? Yes. Wow. And the Bookmobile um, lasted until 2004, and it was cut because it was $100,000 to operate. That much? <laughs> what? Back in the day? We don't have one now. We don't have one, <laughs> don't have one now. Right, Sharon? <laughs> uh, wow. Staying with library, Sherman. Alice Cushman was a children's librarian and a strong personality. Many Fitchburg children remembered her well, which was not true of her tenure at the library. A, she lived to be 90. B, she was Fitchburg's first full-time children's librarian. C, you couldn't look through the books without washing your hands first. Or D, she required that every child pick out a book to take home if they came into the library. So is it, which one is not true? A, B, C, or D? Can you, if, if you need me to read them again, let me know. Is it, whose turn is this? It's Sherman. It's Sherman. It's, it's, it's a, I'll say B. And it's C. C. Oh, no, I'm sorry, D. It's D. Oh, it's I heard D. everybody say C, and I was, <laughs> it's D. Oh. All right. Oh, no. She did not require every child to take home a book, but she did require you to wash your hands first. Um, she was, she, Fitchburg Children's Library was built in 1954, and it was the first freestanding children's library in the country. Eleanor Roosevelt was so taken with the idea of a library entirely for children that she came to visit when it was being dedicated. However, the building was behind schedule, so she ended up walking through it and, taking, and talking with construction workers, all while wearing her fancy fur coat. <laughs> right, so we've brought out the bust. We've got a bust. It's a lovely bust. He's got a lovely little nose there and some <laughs> gorgeous hairdo. He's... Sure, he's a great guy. Okay, can anybody tell me who this is? Can anyone tell me 
who this is. If you get it right, we might mention your name on the K-Zone Morning Commute. That's 6.42 to 9, 105.3 FM and AM 1280. There's not a name on the bottom of it, is no. there? Because that would be ridiculous. That would be outrageous. Yeah. Does anybody know? Nope. Nobody knows? Does anybody know? Oh, is it Art Long Joe? Ooh, who said Art that? Art Long Joe. That is correct. That well, is correct. Well, only because somebody said a school. Ding that bell, maestro. <laughs> bing, 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 You got it. Again, well, it's those stripes. Well, somebody said a school was named yeah, after. Yeah, it's those stripes. So all right. Is that all hmm. for me? So, that was... Art Long Joe and what two sport? Uh, so we're uh, Mary. Yeah. What two sports did he compete in? Speed skating and bicycle uh, riding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there they are. Right. Um, Kathy, unfortunately, he uh, Long Joe died young in a car accident coming home from a victorious race in Quebec but he was honored with a local event that was named after him starting in the 1960s. What was it? It's the Longo Races? Yes. <laughs> Sherman, the steps that lead up to the former high school, which is now the Longjo Middle School, have a nickname. Um, and if you can answer either question, what is the nickname or who was the architect who designed them? Mary? No, but I ran up them and down them every day. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I never stopped to look at the sign. I just ran <laughs> I don't know. Is Kathy? It H is it H.M. Francis? Is this H.M. Francis? What? H. M. Francis? He was the architect. It was. Oh, and uh, it was. it's on the end of Wallace Road. So oh, the Wallace Stairs. No. Wallace Way. Wallace, Wallace Way. Way. Wallace Way. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> So these were named out, the, the Wallace Way was named after Rodney Wallace, who donated money for them, and Mr. Wallace wanted students to be inspired to learn as they walk up to the high school. <laughs> Sherman, we're back to you. Is it Erky? Yes, Erky. Erky Kutunin, Kutunin, Kutunin. Was, a, was an Olympic. <laughs> Kutunin. 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 <laughs> was an Olympian from Fishburg who excelled in the triple jump. After serving the Marine Corps, he had participated in the Victory Olympics. And where were those held? In Victory Olympics, maybe something after something that needed to be won it was blitzed. <laughs> where there was a big funeral earlier in the week. Oh, London. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yep. Um, London 1948. These were also known as the Austerity Games because yeah. London was coming off of a war. And another Finnish athlete who won the most individual medals at the, there was another Finnish athlete who won individual medals at that game. And if anybody here is a sports nerd, does anybody know who that athlete was? Veiko, who, I'm not, I'm like 6% Finnish. Um, Veiko Hultinen of Finland, who took three golds, a silver and a bronze in men's gymnastics. Um, but there was a Dutch athlete, Fanny Blankers Cohen, who was dubbed the Flying Housewife that same year. And she was both a mother of two and a speedy competitor. And she won four gold medals and later revealed that she was pregnant at the time. So quite the impressive Olympics in London, 1948. Mary, Erky returned to Fitchburg to work at the high school. What was his job? Um, hold on. <laughs> I know he coached track. Um, yeah. Uh, industrial arts. Oh my God, yes. Oh my God. <laughs> And uh, Kathy, there is actually a monument to Erky in Fitchburg. Do you know where it is? <laughs> On Main Street, someplace? It's a popular place for the Finns to hang out today. Simon Park? Yes. 
Thank you for the clues. <laughs> um, they used to have a track there for competitions at Simon Park. Oh, yeah. and it says here that Susan is supposed to check on that for Vera. <laughs> so that's a myth, but could be true. We all encourage you to go up to Simon Park and enjoy some pula bread. Is that, am I saying that correct? Uh, current uh, events question. Another man of Finnish descent is actually the leader of our public schools today and <laughs> superintendent. Joe what, Yes. <laughs> 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 wait, wait, no. I'll do that and then. All right, smile. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. There is <laughs> All right, Mary. Yep. This school had a relationship with the Lincoln Center in New York City. Um, it actually partnered with another important educational institute on Elm Street and Academy Street. Uh, say that what, what are you looking for the name of the school the name of the school and it partnered with another important educational institution that's on the corner of Academy yeah. and Elm Street BF Brown it's across the street oh, the art school the um, it was Fitchburg Arts Academy at one point uh, on the other Elm. side of Elm Street and if you took off the F and the A and took the M and put it together with school, it would be called. Okay, now you have me totally confused. Yeah. Do you know? The museum so school? The, the mu yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. oh, it was, okay. With Fitchburg Arts. Um, with Dick Beardmore, right. That's way back. Yeah. <laughs> so way back. it was called a museum with a school at its heart. This is the only pr partnership between a public school and a private museum right. in the country. And it was, lo but it was, lo so Mary gets a point, it was located in the academy building. Right. Speaking of arts, uh, Kathy, hey. many art educators taught at Fitchburg's Applewild School. Which of these did not teach at Applewild? Novelist and journalist Robert Cormier, Fitchburg Art Museum director Peter Timms, Fitchburg Cultural Alliance co-founder Janet Cragen, or dancer and choreographer Marianne Rice? Um. Who did not teach at Applewild? Well, I think Peter Timms did, Janet did. Um. I think maybe Marion Rice taught there too. I don't think Robert Carmier taught. <laughs> he didn't? Wow. Oh. But sure, man, we are going to stick with Marion Rice. Marion Rice and her daughter Rebecca gave dancing lessons in what famous Fitchburg building? Hint. Oh. <laughs> it was originally home, it was a home and designed by a famous architect and has a very Harry Potter vibe. And it's right down the street. Oh. It's next to the library. Um, Stratton Players has a barn in the back. Oh, the Fake Club. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Where's the Fake yeah. Club? For Kathy. <laughs> what is the betting themed <laughs> dance organization that Dennis and Sean founded in Massachusetts where Marion Rice trained? It's putting Dennis and Sean together, Dennis. and it's Desha Deshaun or something style well, of that dance. That is the style of dance, but what Western Mass, still thriving today, dance company is still out there. It, it has to do with betting and, um, Beth. and a biblical name. <laughs> Can I phone a friend in the audience? Sure. <laughs> Beth. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yes. I know that. Thank you, Beth. Okay, I think we have, oh, and there's, there's our dancers. In third place, it's the legend Sherman Whitman. In second place, we've got Kathy, Kathy Cragen, ladies and gentlemen. In first place, everyone pretend you covered your eyes and it isn't obvious. We've got Mary Cragen, the woman with the electric sweater. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Colin!